Hello, welcome back to another Doki Doki Literature Club Plus YouTube video. Today we are going to continue from where we left off, which, uh, uh oh. I guess I say it here. Okay. Sayori. About what happened earlier. Eh? What do you mean? You know, between Yuri and Natsuki. Does that kind of thing happen often? No, no, no. That's really the first time I've seen them fight like that. I promise they're both wonderful people. You don't, you don't hate them, do you? No, I don't hate them. I just want your opinion, that's all. I can see why they make good friends with you. Yeah. You know, Ian. It's nice that I get to spend time with you in the club. But I think seeing you get along with everyone is making, is what makes me the happiest. And I think everyone really likes you too. That's... <laughs> Every day is going to be so much fun. <sighs> Looks like Sayori still hasn't caught on to the kind of situation I'm in. I'm sure being friends with everyone is nice, but does it really need to stop there? We'll just have to see what the future holds, Sayori. I pat Sayori on the shoulder. I said that more to myself than to her, but she views Sayori as an internal monologue sometimes. Okay. Yeah. Let's do this. Oh, what we're doing? Oh, another one of these. Crap. Okay. Uh, who was I going for last time? I think I was going for, uh, crap, I can't remember their names now. <laughs> okay, that's, uh, not Natsuki. I think that's Natsuki. Wait, no. Well, I remember say where you're crap. I'm starting to forget the names. Let's see, um, words? Forgetting words. I don't really get Sayori. What's Sayori? Sayori's kind of, like, nice up, right? Yeah, bros. Um, bubbles, maybe? Oh, crap. Not Sayori. Okay, nope. Crap. Lost? Okay. Sugar? Okay. I'm doing really bad. Valance? Okay. Joy. Okay, joy. Family? Okay. It's kind of like nice stuff. Peaceful? Okay. Mmm, wow, that's a weird word. Happiness. Amazing. The world. Ah, crap. <laughs> Dazzle? Ah, okay, okay. No offense. Destiny. Okay, well, that's not what I thought would happen. Melody? What? Charm? Okay. Wow. Okay, okay. Um. These are so weird. I bouncy? No, okay. Vitality. Okay. Hope. So we got mainly Sayori. It's really passed and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple days. Entering the club room, the usual team greets me. Hi Ian. You know Sayori. Looks like you're in a good mood today. <laughs> I'm just still not used to you being in the club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway. Yes. I'm kinda hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No thanks. Yeah. Chips, that's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? Eh? eh? Why that all of a sudden? No reason really. I just wanted to look at it. Sayori nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets the contents spill out onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. <laughs> I knew it. You, I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair. How do you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have brought a snack before coming to the club room. But either you're not hungry and you want an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. So that only leaves the one option. The what? Yeah. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. Uh -huh. Oh, Yuri. Um. Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh? I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face in, is in her book as always. Uh-uh. I wasn't testing or anything. It was just something in my book. 
Money. Yeah, it's take any advance, I guess, Yori. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after going through this little stunt like that, you're suffering a fair amount of retribution. Uh, did I just? I, I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed in my book. Uh, <laughs> I really like when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of me. That's. There's no way you could think that. You're right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. What? Retribution? That! So coming from you, Sora. I guess there's a little devil inside all of us, isn't there? <laughs> Don't let her fool you. She already knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing you to the club before she even told me. But... You wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick you into circling the bacon then. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. <laughs> Out of nowhere, something smacks Sayori in the face and tumbles on the desk. Assuming... Yeah. <laughs> Flop. Uh, ow. What was... It? A, a cookie. Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayori glances around. It Is this a miracle? It's because I pay my restitution. <laughs> Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> I was just gonna give it to you. But then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. <laughs> Masuki! That's so nice of you. I'm so happy. Sorry, hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. Sorry, rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. So good! <laughs> Sorry, someone clasped her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue! <laughs> You're going through a lot over just that one cookie. I don't know what to do as a voice for Natsuki. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Uh, you have much to do but chill, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez. Beggars can't be choosers. I really just chocolate. Yeah. Why don't you think I- why do you think I gave you that one? Um... So, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. <laughs> Sorry gets out of her seat and goes behind that cookie then wraps her arms around her. Jeez. Uh, I get it, I get it. Cookie still in hand, Matsuki reaches up to nudge Sayori off of her. Um... Sorry suddenly leans a little down and takes a bite of Matsuki's cookie. Uh, hey! Since you said you do that... <laughs> Mouth full, Siri trots away to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monika, can you tell Siori? Eh. Masuki glances around. Monika isn't in the clubroom. Uh, where's Monika anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm, that's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She's probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Eh? You don't think she... She has a... <sighs> I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. <laughs> That's true. Excuse me? Suddenly a door swings open. Okay, how am I gonna do this voice? Sorry, I'm super sorry. No, that's... I can only do so many voices. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, uh, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh? Monika chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. But boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monika quickly glances at me. Uh, never mind that. What held you up anyway? Uh... Well, my lunch period told today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring, at least. I must not have heard it, since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you play music as well, Monika. Uh, I don't really. I kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool! You should play something for us, Monika. That's... Monika looks at me. 
Maybe once I get a little better, a bit better, I will. Yay! That sounds cool. I also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Ian. Ugh. Let me go smile sweetly. Uh, I didn't mean any crush or anything like that. <laughs> Don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently. And I really thought the chances here once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So I didn't miss anything, did I? Mm, not, not really. I chose to leave out Seward's mischievous escapade. I'm sure not too many people end up complaining to her anyway. Looks like everyone has already settled down. Suri somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yuri's back in her book, and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. Man, it looks like no one wants to be bothered today. I slumped down to the nearest desk. How am I supposed to occupy myself with something glitch related by myself like this? I guess I could always read some of the book Yuri gave me, but I'm feeling a little too tired to read. I could probably fall asleep right now. I closed my eyes and ended up listening in on Suri's conversation with Monika. We're probably gonna see. See you in Lake compared to all the other clubs we know. Hmm. Well, we can't give up. The festival's our chance to show everyone what literature is all about. The problem is that the idea of a literature club sounds too big and intellectual. But it's not like that at all, you know? We just need a way of showing that to everyone. Something that speaks to their creative mind. Hmm. That doesn't solve the problem, though. Eh? What do you mean? Even if we come up with the most fun thing ever, nobody will come in the first place if it's a literature event. So it's more important to figure out how to get people to show up in the first place, you know? And after they come, they can do the things that speak to their creative minds. What's this? Shuri is taking this really seriously. It's rare to hear her deliberating like this. Huh, that's a good point. In that case, do you think food will do the trick? But, well, what kind? Uh, well, I guess we could... <laughs> Good thinking. Natsuki would love to do that. Uh, you're right. Natsuki makes the best cupcakes. That worked out perfectly. That wasn't why you suggested it. Cupcakes speak to my creative tummy. Cupcakes it is then. Oh, wow, I screwed up so badly there. I'm hungry. Anyway, we still need to work out the details of the event itself. So. I find myself smiling. In the end, Sayori is still her usual self. But therein lies the unexpected reason I admire her. Unlike me, who has trouble finding any motivation at all, Sayori can put her mind to things and make them come to life. I suppose that's why I end up letting her get on my case about things. I can't help but wonder what it would be like to see the world through her eyes. Wah! I open my eyes to find Sayori's face filling my vision. I knew it would fall out of my chair. <laughs> sorry! Wait! Actually, I'm not sorry at all. It's your fault for sleeping like that. This isn't a napping club. Was I supposed to have a napping club? You're staying up late again, aren't you? Now that you're in a club, you're going to have less time for anime, you know. You'll need to get used to it. Don't say that so loud. I glance over my shoulder to see if Monika overheard. It's true, though. Yeah, I know, I know. You're always looking out for me, Sayori. <laughs> Just like the best. That's a problem. What about you? If you look out for me, it's better than you look out for yourself. You're still oversleeping every day, aren't you? Yeah. No, not every day. That's not very convincing. How many days this past week have you gotten up on time? That's... It's a secret. I knew it. Um... I wish you would admit that now. I can't even do that. Look, see where it's written all over you. Sorry glances around at herself. How is it written all over me? You were clearly in a rush this morning. Look, your hair is sticking out all around you. Ah. I run my fingertips down the side of Sayori's hair, trying to straighten it out. Then you really need a brush for this. My hair is just really hard to get right. I won't fall for that. There's more than just your hair. Look, your bow isn't straight either. And there's a toothpaste stain on your collar right here. I try to wipe off the stain with right Wow. I tried to wipe off the stain with my finger. But nobody would ever notice that. Of course they would. Nobody's going to tell you about it because they don't want to embarrass you. Fortunately, I really don't care about that. Hey, you know. You don't even keep your blazer buttoned up. Seriously, Sayori. Why do you think you don't have a- Oh, wow, that's mean. Why do you think you don't have a boyfriend yet? That's, that's super mean. 
Sorry, but you'll thank me later. I start to button her blazer from the bottom. Once you see how much better it looks, you'll change your mind. This is so funny. What is? Well, I was thinking how weird it is to have a friend who does these kinds of things. Eh? Don't say that. You'll make me feel weird about it, stupid. It's okay, though. I'm happy when you kiss. Are you? Uh, I, I guess. Hey. Oh. Hey, be careful. The bug might come off. Why is this one so hard to close? I struggle to fully close the button in her chest. Does this thing even fit you properly? <laughs> I did when I bought it. <sighs> if you ever buttoned it, you would have noticed sooner that it doesn't fit you anymore. What are you smiling about? I need my boobs got bigger again. D don't say that out loud. <laughs> anyway, you look much better now, so... Ah! Why does it feel so strange to see Siori's blazer buttoned up like that? That's so stuffy. Uh... It's not worth it at all. Siri hastily unbuttons her blazer once more. <laughs> That's so much better. Siri puts her arms out and twirls around. If I keep it unbuttoned, then I won't get a boyfriend, right? What kind of logic is that? And why are you saying that like it's a good thing? Because if I had a boyfriend, then he wouldn't even let me do things like that. It's like this. I said she's making it too obvious that she likes this guy. And this, this seems like a K-drama. <laughs> Let me take care of me better than anyone else could, anyway. Would anyway. That's why I'm keeping on buttons. Stop saying all these embarrassing things. Eh? I didn't say anything embarrassing. Jeez. Well, anyway, just focus on trying to wake up a little earlier. What if you focus on getting to bed earlier? Fine, fine. It's a deal. <laughs> I guess we really are better at taking care of each other than we are at taking care of ourselves. Yeah, I guess so. Huh. Maybe you should come wake me up in the morning. You're doing it again, Sayori. Oh, but I was joking that time. Man, it's impossible to tell with you sometimes. Okay, everyone. <laughs> Crap, I'm just saying words again. Eh? Nika suddenly calls out. Why don't we share the poems we wrote now? Yay! Man, I can't wait to read yours. Yeah, same. I failed to sound enthusiastic, but Sayori still trots away to retrieve her poem. Who should I show my phone to first? Well, Sayori's really excited about it, so I'll see Sayori. Oh my goodness! This is so good, Lee! Eh? I love it! Especially after yesterday's poem. Uh, you're too honest sometimes, Sayori. No, but really! I want to put this on my wall. Can I? Sayori, you must be seriously overreacting. I'm not a good writer at all. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing. Well, maybe that's why. Because I have no idea what I like either. <laughs> Jeez. I'm sure Yuri's opinion has to be a little more constructive than this. Maybe even not Suki's. Are you sure you don't like it just because I wrote it? Eh? Well, I'm sure that's part of it. I do understand you better than a lot of other people, you know? So when I read your poem, it's not just a poem. It's a weird poem? And that makes it feel extra special. Like I can feel your feelings in it. Siri hugs the sheet against her chest. You're so weird, Sayori. <laughs> well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad. But that's why I just go by my heart. If it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm not sure that's exactly how it works. Then again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of this whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah, me neither. Uh. Why don't you at least try giving it some thought? Uh, you want to write something for me? That's so sweet! Yeah, right. But you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Eh? Well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep it in mind. Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Hmm. I guess I like... Happy poems. Wait, sometimes you like sad poems too. Sometimes a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet. Yeah, I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad? I can't see you liking something sad, Sayori. Well, I like happy the most. 
but sometimes when you have a little rain crawl in your head, a sad heart can help give the rain crawl a hug and make a nice happy rainbow. Corey, that's unexpectedly poetic. Eh, it is. You may even better express my feelings after all. Thanks, Ian. I should go write that down then. You can read my poem now, okay? Alright. Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's a secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. Alright. I reach inside my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and bottles, all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends. In each bottle, a starlight can make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper, my fingers go. Like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time to lapse. My empty shelves could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally, all done, I open up and in come my friends. And they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frankly pull them from the shelf, one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend. Each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and shards all over the floor. They are supposed to be for my friends. My friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. That's kind of a little dark. Holy crap. Sorry, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? Yeah, but, I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. You must get tired of me a lot, old thought. I haven't really impressed my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Oh, thanks. I feel like I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little better. That means like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah! Writing's the best! I hope I keep writing until I die! Haha, <laughs> don't get ahead of yourself. Curious always had a habit of being obsessed with something before dropping it no matter when a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Who should I show my poem to next? Sorry about that quick noise, that's my chair arm. It likes to randomly move. Okay, well, it's probably Monica. Hi, Benjamin. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad, I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure. Here you go. I give my phone to Monica. Alright. I like this one. It makes me think of something Sayori would like. Is that so? You and Sayori are really good friends, right? I wouldn't be surprised if you had those sort of things in common. Uh, well, we may be good friends, but Sayori and I are actually really different. Hmm. Well, that may be the case. But maybe there are also some similarities that you wouldn't expect. The way she talks about you, it sounds like the two of you really care about each other's well-being. Even if you show it in different ways, it ends up being more similar than you think. So I think that's the kind of vibe I get when reading your poem. Hmm. You sure you're not reading into it too much? <laughs> I could be. Oh gosh, I sound like Yuri. But in any case, Siori's writing has kind of a gentle feel to it. I can tell that she's like... She likes exploring with emotions, like happiness and sadness. I knew that someone... I knew that someone so happy would enjoy sad things, too. Yeah, that's totally unexpected. Well, to each their own. You shouldn't be afraid to experiment a little bit, either. But anyway, you wanna read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do, too. 
All right, let's take a look. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless. Load me. What? It's fair, I've never watched anyone play this game, but I've heard it gets dark, and it sounds like the poems get dark too. Hmm. It's even more abstract than the last one, huh? <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write it. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just a kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what, what it's about though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A, com oh, a poem can be abstract as a physical expression of a feeling. Or conversation with the reader. So put it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know when you might change your mind. Or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Yeah, is that tip even about writing? What should I, who should I show my poem to next? Okay, now it's between Natsuki and Yuri. We'll go with Yuri. Let's see what you brought me for today. Mm, this is pretty good, man. Were you influenced by seeing everyone's writing styles yesterday? I guess you could say that. I was also a bit surprised by how differently everyone writes. But I respect you for trying new things. You don't need to be afraid to be a little more daring. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain like turning a bunch of gears. Settle your mind wonder through your feelings, and write down the things you see and hear. That's one way to truly enable your readers to see your mind. It's a very intimate experience. Exercise. I see. That's a certainly interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I have, um, well, an example of that, if you'd like to read it. Of course. Is this the poem you wrote for today? Yuri nods and timidly hands me her poem. The raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread. My subconscious, well aware of the consequences, well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, my hunger, my hungry curiosity, the raccoon, and urge. The moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off of my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft, the raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood. Classic Pavlovian conditioning. I slice the bread, and I feed myself again. Okay. Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and convey your emotions through them. Yeah, if it if it take it at if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something like this in people can relate to in their own way. I want to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. And it's those sort of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself. But sometimes, but I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? Well, because 
so embarrassing. The people who wouldn't make fun of you. Don't you have anything like that here? Well, yeah, I guess I do. I think everyone has a little something like that. The best we can do is respect each other and other and our individuality. Even if it's difficult sometimes and some things make us uncomfortable. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I'd probably hate myself. I, I might be ranting a little bit now. I'm glad you're a good listener. Wait. Well, then I shall have come to next. There's a lot of choices here. Let's pick out Suki. Alright, let's see. What voice am I going to do for that Suki now? Hmm. Well, if it's not... It's not really any worse than your last one. But I can't really say it's any better either. Hmm. Huh? Feel what? Uh, well, anything that isn't a train wreck, I'll take it away. And I get the feeling that you're probably the most critical. Hey, what makes you... Wait, I mean, that was a compliment. <laughs> Glad to see someone recognizing my experience. Well then, keep practicing and maybe you'll be as good as me someday. That's, uh... Something tells me that Suki completely missed the point. Kind of think of it, it kind of reminds me of Sayori's poem from yesterday. Eh, you think so? Yeah, well I guess if you've been friends with her for so long, you might be on the same wavelength. But you never really struck me as her type. Sayori has a type all of a sudden? Well, I don't know, but honestly, how can someone so... Er, Fluffy spent so much time with someone like you. It's like she, she's dragging around a dead weight. Uh, that was a little unnecessary. But think of it this way. If it weren't for me, she would probably just fly away like letting go of a balloon. So you say we, we each take care of each other in our own way. Whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh yeah, I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem. Here. Amy likes spiders. Do you know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Okay. One time, I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. Sorry about that. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world's better off without spider lovers. And I'm gonna tell everyone. <laughs> okay. Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with such simpler an analogies. And it helps people realizing how stupid they're being. Like anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course, it's about how everyone thinks my... That doesn't matter. It can't... It can be about anything. I wrote to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or a guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid if people find out, they make fun of you or think less of me. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy? I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Huh, that's funny. Yuri wrote about something similar today. Huh? Did you say Yuri? Yeah. She said her phone was about an unusual hobby of hers. I don't really get it, but she said something similar to you. That people shouldn't make each other feel insecure about, about those things. Really? Well, I mean, Yuri's pretty weird, so I wouldn't doubt that she has some weird hobby. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Uh, it's not like Ellie Dudge or anything. But Suki has trouble finding words. I, I guess I should try to not be so mean to her. If she feels insecure about her weird behaviors and stuff, I mean... I always hate people who make me feel insecure, and Yuri made me feel insecure yesterday. But the way you put it, it sounds like she's learned her lesson. Well, I would say so. Even if her writing style is really different, I'm sure she'll appreciate the message in your poem. It's what I do best, after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like, conveying emotions is important. But I want to help people think, not to feel. I want to make people think, not to feel. Remember that. I'm gonna write a good one for tomorrow too. Look forward to it. 
Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra, extra planned today. So if everyone could come sit at the front of the room. This is not the festival. Well, sort of. Ugh. Do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. Suri has been working on posters and I designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all. But that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Uh, sorry, I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? <laughs> oh, Monica. Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. So we're put, putting it all on, on all the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. Shuri has been coming a poster hold it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monika? You didn't even You didn't you didn't already start putting these posters up, did you? Eh. Well I did. Did you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know. There's no way I'm gonna be performing in front of a group of people like that. I I agree with Matsuki. I could never, in my life, do something like that. Imagine it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys! No, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Matsuki and Yuri have been have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kinda overlooked that. So I'm sorry. But I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put on a good performance, that will inspire others to do the same. And the more who, people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Uh, yeah, it's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right. It's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share with, that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Matsuki and Yuri remain silent. Shuri looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monika have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Matsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Uh... Okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. All right. <sighs> Thanks, Masuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expectant faces. <sighs> I, I guess I don't really have a choice. I That's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. It's hard to see us going to be the best of me. Oh gosh, you'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. No, no, no way. Monica, this is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh no. Don't worry. I also have to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Night Max? Uh, of course. Now let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. <laughs> Monica begins to recite her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Suri looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes her recite recitation? Recitation? The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That, that was so good, Monica! Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to get go next, Sayori? I'll go next. What? Yuri's so Yuri's fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. 
this poem is called? Yuri anxiously glances each of us. You picked out Yuri? It's called After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. This poem is full of twists and turns in a structure that she's, she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her, as if she bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save the situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterward, and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for it, but we were caught off so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back into her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. <clears throat> I guess I'm next then. Yuri hops out of her chair and fearfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Uh, haha. <laughs> Sorry, I giggled. Hehe. <laughs> Sayori. It's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? I try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Try to recite it to yourself, like in front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best that way. I see, I see. Okay then. Yuri begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from, Sayori, from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes poems. Or likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori. <laughs> you, you liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? You went nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. delivery. Eh, I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where the sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's, well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do in front of everyone. <laughs> The next time I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay! Now, who's next? Natsuki? <clears throat> don't make me go before Ian. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Ian lower everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. Natsuki? It's fine, it's fine. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that will improve over time though. Yeah, maybe. Alright then, that just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. Her poem is calm. It's calm. Why are you looking at me? Because you're presenting. <sighs> anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. Once she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when she's spoken, well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes and everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You better not make me do that again. Uh, well, do you at least feel fair enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people would be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people. Only it's just my friends. It's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it'd be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. 
But I said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez. I should probably find some other poems to recite instead. That's fine too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. Uh, yeah, no problem. Okay everyone, I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, so let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish playing tomorrow, and then we'll have the gig in spring. Monday's the big day. I can't wait! I can do it. I can do it. Alright. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Signorina and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. If it's for the sake of the club, and impressing Monica, then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep! You two always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? It is! Jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, uh... How are you supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Ian. You don't have to say it. Whatever. Let's go already. I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori is being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori! Sorry, I was stressing you out. Ah, uh, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. Like how we get to... I, I mean... Sayori fumbles with her words. So... Let's just say that one day, Yuri asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You kind of put me on the spot here. Mm -hmm. Well... Well... I'm gonna go with the Sayori line. I would still walk home with Sayori. Sayori? Sayori? Do you really think I would ditch you for Yuri? Eh, but, but she's so beautiful and smart. Jeez. I haven't seen her in the club every day. Besides, you always seem to really like going home together. I won't just ruin that for you. Please don't spill it, Ian. You think about me too much sometimes. Yuri would deserve it if she wanted it, so... Sorry, I already made up my mind. I really can't figure you out sometimes. Sorry. Besides, what's the point in speculating something that's never going to happen? Hmm. Conversation trails off. It's kind of a weird thing for Sayori to care so much about. I want to respect her and keep her happy too. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen that time. I can save here? Okay. Okay, I think I'm going to end this episode here of uh, Doki Doki. It's like, this game is getting interesting but also weird, so I have a feeling the next one's going to be even more bizarre. It's crazy to me how these take so long. But it's a really fun game. I'm probably going to keep going with it since I already have part two now. I'm just going to finish the game. But if you guys enjoyed this video, uh, please leave a like. Uh, comment down below what you want to see next or something you might like about the series. And please subscribe while you're at it. And I hope you all enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.